Colombia. And we're here. What's up, y'all? Welcome to AI for Entrepreneurs, episode seven, eight. eight. We're, we we getting up there, y'all. We getting eight. up there. Episode eight. We in the building. <laughs> my name is Ivan Lee Jackson. This is my friend, good good partner, podcast host Christopher Lang, and we're in the building, y'all. We're in the building. A little bit of allergies, so you know I may sound a little different. Oh, yeah. Chris, I know he's going through it as well. I'm not waving at you. I'm just telling my camera to get me in focus. <laughs> um, yeah, man. Last week in AI, a lot, a lot happened. I know you were telling me that you know you got a lot of things to kind of uh, catch us all up on. And um, so this, this should be an interesting segment. Last week in AI, one of the more pivotal, pivotal, pivotal last weeks in AI since we've been doing. Yeah, this we got a since AI has been. We got a really. lot going on this past uh, this past week. Uh, so starting out on our list is this isn't really something anyone could use. It's just something that I thought was relatively cool slash scary. And so I think it was about two weeks ago, the military just finished up an actual dog fight, like airplanes fighting in the sky, real live airplanes. One of those airplanes was piloted 100 percent using AI. So they have a new experimental X-62A fighter jet that was piloted 100% by AI, and it went up in a dogfight against an F-16 piloted by a real fighter pilot. Uh, they didn't actually tell us who won this dogfight, but in the DARPA simulations where they had, uh, they used like the simulator jets rather than real jets, the AI beat the real pilot five out of five times. So my assumption is, since they're not gonna tell us who actually won these dogfights, is that the AI actually beat the real fighter pilot many many times they ran about 24 tests so far or so far and they are going to continue running more of these dog tests to train the ai uh now the ai jet did have a real pilot in it who would have the ability to disable the ai and take control of the aircraft if needed but they claim they didn't have to use that at all the ai was fully in control the entire time from takeoff to landing um the jets did come within a thousand feet of each other they were doing head-to-head -head combat uh, now, a thousand feet might not seem that close until you realize that they were flying at 1,200 miles an hour. So a thousand feet when an AI is piloting one of those planes is, yeah, pretty, pretty damn close. Um, and the Pentagon is saying they do want to continue this AI research uh, because they want to be able to put this AI into their drones. Um, so pretty cool that AI is piloting. Fighter jets, uh, relatively scary. If you've ever seen the movie Terminator, I'm relatively certain this is where it started. Uh, they started yeah. giving the machines the yeah. ability to shoot things down. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's just, because you would think about it logically, right? AI is going to be an actual pilot, right? Just because, you know, we take out human, <laughs> human fear, human... Uh, the human perspective that 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 colors everything we do when we're doing it, right? So, for example, you're a fighter pilot. You still have that piece of humanity in you that's thinking about your kids and getting back home. Let me let me let me not take this 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 riskier maneuver, even though I'm in a jet fight mm -hmm. right now. Let me take the more conservative approach. Maybe that'll liken my hands of getting back home. Let me not fly within a thousand feet of this other plane head on to get into a better position to win because it's a little bit dangerous, whereas the AI, the AI is not thinking about any of that. And the AI is just coldly calculating- Achieve objective. Approach to achieve that objective. And so logically, it makes sense that when it comes to especially things like that, jet fighting and stuff like that, high risk, that's gonna do better than humans. And um, yeah. Not only that, but just the reaction time. The reaction time of the AI is instantaneous, milliseconds, whereas it might take uh, you know, the, the best fighter pilot in the world might be able to react in under a second, but it's Good. still going to be way longer of a reaction time than that AI is going to have in order to control that plane. Well, I mean, that's one of the things I was actually thinking about, though. So, like, what I don't they need, they need a supercomputer because, for example, I was just thinking, like, okay, plane's going this way, enemy plane comes this way, enemy plane lets out a couple missiles at AI plane. If it's like chat GPT, 
I'm assuming the AI, the government's using a little bit more of an advanced AI than ChatGPT. It's going to take a minute to get that response. You got to prompt it like, oh no, two <laughs> missiles are incoming. And then it's going to be dot, 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 process it. So, and that, 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 when you prompt an open AI, it's going out to the servers, it's processing, it's sending back right. the response. This is all built into the airplane. There's no, it's an instantaneous response. Ah, okay, 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 okay. So that's okay. The model is definitely not reaching out to an open AI server somewhere from the sky, waiting and while it's spinning, going, ah, uh, boom. <laughs> <laughs> boom's gonna keep flying. You get back to me when you want to get back to me. Nah, I, yeah, that, that that that's um, you know, yeah, and, and again, to, to your cold calculating point, um, the other the one of the other things that's scary about it is if the mission is go bomb this target. And the human pilot sees that there's civilians all over that area. They may call back. They may be like, "No, you know, no go, danger, close. Like, can't. I'm not going to shoot that. We're not going to kill all those civilians." Whereas the AI, it's just going to achieve its target. It's going to destroy that target, regardless of who's around. So, I guess it really depends. As long as, at least for now, as long as you have the human ability to disable the AI and be like, "No," and make that judgment call. But we've seen from old tests that. The AI sometimes doesn't listen to the human commands, so it better be like a hard switch and not something done remote. Uh, but if they're going to be putting these this AI in drones, there's, it's all going to have to be remote, and the AI could potentially say, nah, I'm going to achieve my goal. This is what you told me to do. So we'll so see. We'll, really, we'll see where that ends really up before they actually give them real missiles. We're actually really getting close to, like, Terminator. Like it, it's As soon as crazy. the AI is able to fix itself, like those humanoid robots that like um, Tesla's building or OpenAI figure one, uh, once they teach them to fix themselves and they can already basically code themselves, um, humans will become completely useless to them. All they have to be able to do is program themselves and build and fix themselves and humans are useless, which is, again, the premise of Terminator. Give them weapons, we're fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on. Let's move um, on. This is this is um, yeah. We, we can go I'm like that the so, vibes I should be getting about You're right now. I'm like thinking about <laughs> Sarah. Connor so onto and... some some things that are more positive vibes. Oh, okay. There were a couple of new models released this week. Now they are in online models. These are open source models. So Meta released Llama three, which is pretty much comparable to GPT four. It's actually sitting at number five in the um chatbot arena right now right under google gemini almost tied and the only reason it's number five is because um two versions of claude and gpt4 are all tied right now for number one so those three are kind of right on par with each other and then you have gemini 1.5 pro and barely underneath it you have llama which is interesting because that's the first time an open source model has shown up in the arena, let alone been ranked. Uh, so Llama's a really, really good model. It's open source. You can download it. You can use it. And I'm actually, at the end of this, when I'm talking about this, I'm going to give you a way to use these models on your own local computer so you can try these out. Because the other open source model that came out just a couple of days ago, actually, is called Pi3 or Phi3, P-H-I. And that's brought to us by Microsoft. And that is a small language model so it's not it's not comparable in the size of like llama 3 or even like open ai or uh, claude it's a smaller model but it's smaller it's concise and is really 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 showing to hold up to like gpt 3.5 level but it's like a minuscule fraction of the size in fact you could download that whole model onto your machine at its most raw stripped down version at about two gig uh, at its bigger version, it's only about 8 gig to download onto your local machine. And I, I I got to play around with it a little bit, as well as Llama 3, and, and they're pretty damn good, especially for something that runs locally on the machine. And because I'm running it on my local machine, which I do development and design, as I have a relatively beefy machine, it runs real, it's almost instantaneous response. It starts streaming out that response pretty much as soon as I hit enter. None of that waiting like you were talking about uh, from OpenAI or some of those other online closed source models. That's so, yeah, actually. 
that's llama three and then uh five uh, llama three and five three let me actually do, 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 do. why can't you see my face there we go and so you can actually try these models out if you there's a tool uh, there's a couple of them but the one that i use is called lm studio and you can actually let me share my screen really quick i want to share this tab let's bring this up so you can download lm studio and you can get uh you can get it for mac windows or linux no matter what machine you're using and the reason i use this one there, there's a few others um, the other closest one uh, that has a GUI interface is called Yeah or Yay. I don't know, but it didn't have Llama 3 already pre-baked in, or it's called Jan. Uh, they didn't have Llama 3 already baked in yet, so I went with LM Studio, which now also, just on an update today, you can see right here, uh, on their new update, they have Microsoft Pi 3 and Llama 3 for you to try out. Uh, you download it local, you download the model local. So you could technically, like if you want to use one of these open source models, especially if you're doing simple tasks, writing emails, doing content creation, you could do that right on your machine and pay nothing because all of the only cost associated with it is machine processing power. Now you are going to want to make sure that you have a decently powered machine because it is going to eat up a lot of resources. And so if you do have an older or slower machine, it might not be instantaneous. It might even lock up the computer, depending on how old it might be. Uh, but for me, for instance, I hit enter and the response is streaming immediately. So personally, I've been using Llama 3 for the past, uh, pretty much this week exclusively, so that I could compare it to something like Opus or to GPT-4. And the quality of content that I'm getting is really comparable. Uh, I, I see no reason to go pay for one of those other models right now when Llama 3 is free for me so what about like plugins like a different uh, exterior or not exterior but like add-on abilities such as like browsing the internet um things like that oh so you can actually train because they're open source you can train them and within days of llama 3 being released because it's open source there's already custom trained versions of llama 3 available one of them with web access uh, some have function calling, some took, uh, with Llama 3, one of the downsides is there's only an 8,000 context window, 8,000 token context window. Uh, but someone's already put out a version of Llama 3 that has a 16,000 context token window. And Meta has said that in the coming month, it's going to be putting out one with 128,000 context window, which would match Opus and GPT-4. So uh, as as they add on to this and as pe cus people make their own custom trained models of this, there there's a high likelihood that this might surpass the large models that are out there. Um, when you say train, like, so you download a version of Llama 3, you start talking uh -huh. to it, and you can train it to access the internet. You can talk to it and train it to get to the well, internet. Well, it, like, it, it's a lot. I don't want to say even a little. It's it's a lot more complex than that. And I'm not going to get yeah. into the nuances of how to train an AI model. Because even with OpenAI, you can custom train your own AI model. Uh, and I'm not even talking about just the assistance. You could do a custom trained model that's trained exclusively with your data. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's basically a model that is 100% knowledgeable on your data, not by fetching information from uh, spreadsheets or uh, from PDFs that you've uploaded, but it's built into its knowledge base at that point. And um, one of the things with these open source models, especially the smaller open source one, this uh, Microsoft Pi 3, because it's such a small model, but it's still so smart, it's gonna start opening up the ability for people to natively build AI into their applications, into their tools, into phones, and have it run locally rather than needing to make those external server calls. These open models are also going to be really beneficial, especially with, since you can custom train these models for companies that didn't want to custom train a model with their sensitive data mm. previously, simply because, you know, they didn't want that in a public facing AI model, even though it's, you know, quote unquote private that data would still be going out to someone else's server. So now with these, it never needs to leave your own internal server infrastructure because you could even uh, have it locally running. Let's say I installed Llama 3 on a web accessible server 
I can, I could make API calls to my own version of Llama. So I could, for instance, build Llama 3 as one of the models you can choose in the Optimize AI tool suite, but it wouldn't actually cost us anything other than the computing power to run Llama on that third party server. Oh, but there wouldn't be that. any actual like token fee, you know, it'd pay X amount per million tokens in, X amount out. It would be right. 100% free because it's an open source model. So uh, these open source models are really, really starting to step up the ga their game and they're starting to be ranked in um, the chatbot arena. So they're, they're really, these closed source models are really, really going to need to start stepping it up. Uh, especially like um, Llama 3 used a minuscule fraction of the amount of money to train this model than companies like OpenAI or Claude. So the, the small language models and these open source models are really, really starting to creep up and might surpass these large language models in the very near future. So definitely yeah. something to look at. And, and there's a ton of other ones that, that you probably might have never even heard of. Um, and when you download LM Studio, you can actually see some recommended models that you could download and try that are, that are completely open source, uh, as well as just see list. You can, there's a site called Hugging Face where people put all of these models. You can go search there. Uh, you can find a ton of different open AI, or not open AI, but uh, open source AI models that you could download and run right on your own local machine. And again, not spend a penny. That's crazy. A lot so of if you're a very cost-effective entrepreneur and you don't want to spend any money, um, counterintuitive for me to tell you, but you should definitely take a look at these open source models because they'll do a lot of the things that you can do with these bigger models right on your local machine. Just make sure you have a decent computer to run them. That's crazy, man. Like the amount of resources people have access to, a whole website full of different AIs. Um, what's also kind of crazy is that they haven't really figured out the best way or the best approach to like train the AI or build AI or manage AI, right? It's almost kind of the wild, wild west. You have open AI trying it this way. You have Meta trying it this way. You got Elon Musk trying to go this way. Like there's multiple mm -hmm. approaches and different routes of which they're trying to get to. And it's, it's just real interesting to see which one is the most efficient, which one's going to win, um, which ones are most useful for us as they're going through that process. Um, it's an interesting time. What a time to be alive, especially for nerds like us. A hundred percent, hundred percent. As soon as I heard Llama three come out, came out, I was I was getting ready to do a Python installation on my local machine, and that's when I searched to find these uh, tools because I was like, I really don't want to code this. Um, mm. Luckily, I didn't have to, and no one has to. So LM Studio, that that link will be in the description. Uh, right. So next up, I'm going to actually do a demo here. So there's an AI, and and <clears throat> it's not new, new. Uh, this has been out for a little while. The new thing is the fact that they just released an API uh, like two days ago, actually. Uh, they just released an API so you can access this externally rather than only on their site. And this is called Hume. And what Hume does, <clears throat> uh, you don't type to it at all. You actually speak to Hume exclusively. You cannot type to Hume. But what it does and what it what it's meant for is it detects the emotion in your voice and then alters the way it's speaking to you based on what it detects. Not only does it have a vocal one, but it has a webcam one so it can see you and detect how you're feeling and what you're, what emotions you're expressing based on your facial expressions while it talks to you. So I actually want to do a demo of Hume. I want that. I want that. That was actually, uh, that was actually kind of, I want that. I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to. I want to see this. So let me, hopefully this will be able to detect my microphone since I'm also on here. Uh, let's let turn my, my camera off, my mic off for one second. I need to blow my nose. I don't want you guys to hear me blow my nose. Go ahead, go ahead. I'll wait for I you to start so. the conversation. But so, so yeah, so this is an, it's an empathetic AI voice and it's specifically an AI voice because you can't chat with it. And the empathy part because, is because it's, it's built to detect your emotions based on the conversation you're having with it, based on certain inflictions in your voice, or if you're using the webcam version, based on certain facial expressions that you have while you're, while, while you're having the conversation with this AI, which I'll also demo in a minute uh, once we do the voice demo. 
So let's start a conversation here, and hopefully, with any luck, it will detect my microphone while I'm also recording. Hey, Hume, can you hear me? Did you click the button? Try to demo. I see the screen. I, the, the screen I see is uh, the home, the home screen, the Hume screen. <laughs> Emphatic AI to serve human well-being. I see a button that says "Try the demo" and then start building. Oh, there we go. All right. So now, hey, Hume, how are you doing? I'm doing well, thanks. How about you? How's your day going? Ivan, can you hear the response? I How can't, but as I mentioned, Ready as I mentioned, my son is um. <laughs> My my six year old is home. He's playing Fortnite upstairs, and he's screaming at the top of his lungs against his enemies. I don't know if you can hear if you're picking gotcha. it up. But I, I muted myself, so he didn't hear it. Why you speak to him? Great gotcha. to hear okay, that. so I'm gonna speak to Hume now because uh, I can't actually speak to both at the same time because Hume is listening to me right now. But I want you to notice, as I go through, it's gonna be detecting what it believes I'm feeling over here on the bottom right hand side, so you'll be able to see, and then also the emotions that it's using to communicate back with me. So Hume, sorry, I'm back to you now. So let's chat, how are you? Hey there. I am here, ready to chat with you. How's it going on your end? Oh, it's going well. I'm actually doing a demo right now of your capabilities for my, pod or for my podcast. That sounds exciting. I am glad you're exploring my capabilities for your podcast demo. We know if you have any questions or need assistance with anything? Yeah, so I actually want to get your opinion on something because one of the things that we just talked about is the military putting AI into fighter jets and having that AI fighter jet fight against a human pilot. Uh, what are your thoughts on implementing AI into That's military operations? It's a contentious issue with various ethical considerations. What are your views on this topic? All right, so I'm going to stop the microphone right now so but if you notice as i'm talking to it it showed that it showed interest confusion and anger uh at my question actually so it seemed to be angry that i even asked that uh but it shows that i was showing concentration and intent and contemption uh because i guess i showed contempt for putting ai into the military but just by my speaking and my tone of voice and my inflections it's able to determine how i'm feeling so this is one way. Let's close this one out. So that's the audio only. But now I want to go, I'll share this tab here. So this one is the webcam version. So just as I'm sitting and I'm talking, uh, let me just start webcam. So you can see it detecting my face. And as it detects my face, you can say, like, if I'm smiling, it shows joy and amusement and excitement. Or if I'm angry, then it shows anger and disgust and confusion just based on my facial expressions, real time as I'm talking. This is so interesting. Um, and right now I have it muted, but if I didn't have it muted, the AI would actually be speaking back to me. It would be a real, real live conversation with this AI while it's detecting my facial expressions. So this would be good for something just to see, like uh, if you have a large meeting or... Uh, online school and you have people you know you can see which students are bored which student or which employees are like rolling their eyes at you yeah. even if you're not actively paying attention and they get a readout at the end uh it also so does facial expression it also looks for vocal bursts so if i say like hey uh it, it looks for more like what's called burst activity so yep so pain because i yelled hey or if i'm like oh, <laughs> i don't know what's going on um let's see if it detects it might have known i wasn't lying yeah it wasn't it wasn't a burst uh, it wasn't really a burst but it but it basically detects uh things like that and then the speech is what what i just showed uh so right now i'm expressing confusion and disappointment and awkwardness no you're you're wrong now now you're wrong well, you weren't um, sure you weren't sure what you were going to say you were looking at what it was that's gonna true read, so it hurt. It was some confusion and some doubt as it posted the <laughs> the things. This is really um, but cool. yeah, right now I'm calm and joy and amusement, uh, interest. So so, but just from my facial expressions. Um, one of the other things that I did, uh, I did a test with this earlier. I, I won't do it live, but one of the other tests that I did earlier is I I told it that it was going to be a lie detector because a lot of how you can detect if someone's lying is through their inflection in the in their voice. So I told it, hey, you're going to be a lie detector. I'm going to say a statement, and you tell me if you think it's true or false. Uh, so I'd say a statement, 
and I'm going to say seven out of eight times, it was correct whether or not I was lying or telling the truth just wow. by the inflection in my voice. So, th and this is actually something you can try for free. Just go to hume.ai, H-U-M-E.ai, and you can go ahead and try the demo yourself. You could talk to it. Uh, you do need to sign up for an account to do this facial demo, but the account is free to sign up for, at least in this playground style scenario. If you wanted to use it like uh, through an API, say we built it into the Optimize AI tool suite, uh, you, you pay for that, but. That's so yeah, that cool. is Hume. I, I... I'm definitely trying. So to it's that. a different, yeah, it, it's a different type of AI that we haven't actually uh, worked with so much because we're used to talking about text generation, not so much the spoken AI, whereas that, that one only speaks to you. And and again, it kind of goes in with the human emotion side that we saw from I want to say infection I um, yeah, 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 and right, right, right. But again, that was very text-based. It had a voice, but your the input was really only text-based, whereas this is only speaking. So it's like having a conversation with the AI. So I, I thought that was pretty cool. I, I think that's amazing. And and honestly, like being able to read the emotion or the 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 tonality to have empathy and its understanding uh -huh. when 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 listening to you and speaking to you makes it even that much more functional. So now you're starting to get towards like uh, um, Iron Man and his personal assistant that he used to talk to. Remember the Iron Man movie? Oh, Jarvis, right, right, right. Yeah, Jarvis, right? Jarvis, yeah. Like, and that's the thing. So like, you know, if you're talking to Jarvis and there's like a, 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 a bad guy attacking you and you say you need something really fast or to, you know, give me all full power, Jarvis can understand like, oh, it's an emergency situation. Let me just try to, versus if you're just, you know, kicking it. And you just need more power to heat up some popcorn or something, right? Like, it, it, right, right, right. To be able to understand these things in context, to be able to look at my face and understand what it is I'm trying to say or accomplish or convey is is amazing. And and um, you know, I just think that's where we're going. And that, obviously, that's the main topic that I want to dig too deep into that now. So that's kind of where we're going to go with the main topic today of this conversation uh, or this podcast, but. Yeah, man, it's going to be real soon to like where Siri is your AI, where you click, you speak to it, and they can just imagine if Siri could understand those inflections and you know, that emotion and be able to give you mm -hmm. this, 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 this is long And mind. respond in kind. Like if you're sad, have it be like, oh, you know, hey, it's okay. And even in the tone of voice that Siri uses to reflect that emotion. Yeah, so also, what was cool emotion. is I noticed. Um, even more so than open AI or at least their um their mobile app voice. Right. This one you can interrupt a little bit better, you can you can speak more natural, I noticed. Like, oh yeah, you can straight up interrupt it and it it's it's perfectly fine. Like I even uh, in a test before I, I straight up just interrupted it in the middle of its answer and then I was like, Oh I'm I'm sorry, I interrupted you and I was like, Oh it's it's okay, I understand you were excited to to you know to express your point. Uh would you like me to continue or would you like to continue? <laughs> like, like kinda like a human would kind would respond. Right, right, right. No, I think that's extremely cool, man. I'm definitely I have a I have a window open up already to try that out when we get <laughs> off of this. That's my I'm I'm gonna be looking into that. Um and, and well now the other thing that, that's interesting about that is it gives you a little bit of a sorry I'm fucking with my lights. Nope. It gives you a little bit of an idea of what the um like the the actual like AI robots. Because that, that's kind of how they perceive things. So the ability for those AI robots to be able to perceive emotion based on the way that their their owners are speaking to them or based on the facial expressions, like it could walk into the room and see that someone looks sad and go and say, hey, you look sad. Is there something wrong? Is there anything you want to talk about? Uh, and to be able to perceive that in its environment would kind of take it to a whole nother next level. Now, I'm, I, I don't know if they have that built in or not. But just based on this free demo, I'm assuming they've got something similar built into those machines. I'm even thinking, like, honestly, special needs. Um, you know, I have a yeah. daughter that's autistic. She, she, she 
is a little bit more empathetic than most autistic kids. Like she's a little bit more emotional, hugging, caring. But mm-hmm. <laughs> just going through that experience, obviously I know that there's a lot of kids with autism that do struggle with empathy or with just, you know, under- social cues and understanding mm-hmm. that type of stuff. And so now imagine like AI AIDS, right? Like there's, there's, you know, a way where you can have like a little AI, I don't know, camera or crown or thing that's like somehow can like AI contacts, right? You can see what you're seeing. Right. Uh, Don, yeah. Can... I mean, they already have those meta glasses, those Ray-Ban sunglasses that have the camera built in and just kind of. Exactly. And like just giving you little helpful cues like, um, you know, angry, sad for those that aren't good at picking up on those social cues. That could be really right. Helpful Especially as well. you said in someone with autism, it's it's a lot more difficult to pick up on that. But the AI mm-hmm. might be able to pick up tiny little inflections in the voice uh, to determine that it was angry or sad, whereas the normal human might just hear it exactly the same. If you're not, well, especially if you're like not, the, the, yeah. the person with autism now they can navigate through life a lot more easier because, for example, yeah. they, where, where whereas if they walk through let's say they're in university they're walking through university they may not be able to see like okay this person's happy this person's sad they're not good at picking up on those social cues so now if they actually have this like camera that's kind of you know just glance at the face this person's happy this person's sad this person's looking to have a conversation this person you know what i mean mm-hmm. it's, like, it's almost like a cheat sheet for them so it can be it can have right really, right it can have huge implications Huge but in addition to that, look at the uh, to think about some of the security implications, uh, especially on the video one. You have a surveillance camera in like a bank, and someone comes in like this person's irate. This person, you know, these people are calm, they're fine. It kind of flags someone <clears throat> as they walk in the door that this person, where they could be a potential security risk, and make sure that you have coverage near those types of people, or you keep your eye on them more so than others. Um, right. I don't know if that's kind of breaching into an invasion of privacy, but if you're walking oh, into a bank or into a public area, you, there is no expectation of privacy in a public domain. So, yeah. But no, yeah, there's so many yeah. different applications for tools like that. Yeah. Like, honestly, like I said, this kind of delves into what we're going to talk about later in the podcast, but just any AI where I have to speak to it, I wanted to have that functionality. Like, I wanted to like integrate with you. Like I will never mm-hmm. talk to OpenAI or ChatGPT on my phone again, knowing that right, right, there's Hume out there that can that can understand and contextualize so much more better. So like if there's a robot that's speaking to me and is using AI to speak to me, they better go contract with Hume. Like I want <laughs> I, like that or have something me. similar, or have something very similar exactly. But they said they've been doing it for over ten years of research. I believe them. Like that is that yep. is amazing. That is amazing. That's like, after this podcast, I'm going to be talking to you for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, so that's why I wanted to bring that up. It's, it's a little different than uh, things we've talked about, but it is something that could be useful for an entrepreneur, um, right, for a business right, right, person. Right. But there, there's tons of different use cases someone could come up with for a tool like that, and they do have an API now, so it can be built into your own existing tools or applications if you are or can hire a developer. Now I've already started kind of coming up with some uh, some thoughts. I got to see how much it costs before I decide to build it into anything. Um, <laughs> and then the last one's going to take us into our mystery or our kind of middle segment, mystery segment, um, our laziness. We don't feel like coming up with anything ahead of time segment, whatever we want to call it. Um, so Adobe made an announcement. Adobe. Adobe. In the next, oh, this, this one's big. Um, in the next couple of months soon this year in 2024 adobe is going to be releasing a new version of adobe premiere which is their video editing professional video editing software for anyone that doesn't know um and OpenAI sora is going to be built in directly into premiere pro so you can do things like generate b-roll footage automatically you could do things like extend existing video clips if you need extra footage in the beginning or the end or even in the middle uh in fact in their demo they did something where the, someone was filming like a heist and they had a briefcase with like four or five little fake diamonds in it and they highlighted the briefcase and said more diamonds and Sora filled that in with more diamonds and kept it in frame as if that briefcase in the video was full of diamonds. 
Yeah. So it's going to open up the ability for anyone who can afford to use Adobe Premiere Pro and has the skill to use it at least to really start experiencing and working with Sora in a professional level. And that's going to be coming out in the yeah, some in 2024 is really all they gave us. So we'll we'll see if they meet that timeline. That's amazing. Um, I'm, I'm a little less excited about that because just the, there there's a difficulty curve with Adobe Premiere in terms of being able to use it. And well, there's excitement, but it's also I see the potential, right? So when you marry a tool like Sora into a world class tool such as Adobe Premiere. If you know how to use Adobe Premiere, oh my God, you're going to be able to do like... Oh, I'm going to have a field day with it. Yeah, you're going to have a field day. Someone like me is going to be a little bit more confused. I'm going to wish they had a regular window. I can just make a little bit video, right? But like, yeah, I can... The 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 potential though to like just... Like it's a natural, it's a natural syner synergistic partnership. And... Nah, the potential of what you could do with it would be kind of amazing. Do you think that they're doing it that way? Like, do you think when they release Sora, they'll release it through Adobe Premiere versus like, like a like a open window like they ChatGPT? Have no plans for a public release of Sora. So there's no plans. Okay. So and that, that actually takes us into our next topic, though, which is these large AI companies with holding models for safety concerns, because that's one of the reasons why OpenAI was going to withhold Sora because safety concern, you know, you could generate whatever you want. It could be used, misused. But what it seems like is they were waiting for a massive, massive licensing deal from someone like Adobe, who's going to pay them obscenely to use their model rather than trying to go out to the general public and get API usage fees and get, you know, normal chat GPT user fees on that tiny scale. So it seems like more so than a, uh, safety concern, it seems like they're withholding certain things for financial concern. Uh, so coming from a company called open AI, I call a whole lot of bullshit. Uh, and that's kind of what the mystery segment is about is what are people's thoughts on these large companies withholding models? Cause not only do you have, uh, open AI withholding Sora with no current plans for any sort of real public release of it, uh, looks like they're focusing on licensing deals. Maybe it'll be built in a cap cut soon, uh, or other video editing softwares that you have to pay for where they're going to get their guaranteed money. Uh, but then you also have, um, Microsoft who I, I get, you know, they, they're a heavy investor in open AI, but Microsoft also has a model called, uh, their own model called VASA one. And what VASA one can do is take a single image, one image doesn't have to be anything special, just a single image and turn it into a video with perfect limbs, lip syncing to any uploaded script or even real time lip syncing to, you know, microphone in lip sync out on that picture. And I actually want to show an example of this because this is another tool where they have no plans for a public release. This is just a, you know, beta demo, like they're, they're not going to give this through to the public at all. They have no intention of it for safety concerns, but I'm willing to bet any amount of money. We start to see it built into maybe some, maybe an Adobe product or somewhere where that's going to license the AI. Um, and they're going to bring it to the public eye that way because they're going to get their guaranteed bag. Let me show you the oh. demo before I rant and get your input on that as well. Okay, okay, okay. But let me show you this demo here. Let's share this one. Let's switch here. All right. So one of the, the so now this one they just used the picture of the Mona Lisa, uh, and then this video goes on. And I'm not going to play the whole thing, but it uh, it shows you some other clips that um, Vasa created using just one single image. I'm a paparazzi. I don't play no Yahtzee. I go pop, 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 pop my cameras. Well, prevent those cavities from getting worse and prevent new cavities. I'm not surprised that everything lasts. You stand up all the time. I'm a stand up comedian, improviser by trade. You had me on a, one of the most fun experiences of my life as I was on the show in Chicago. And I literally haven't expressed different emotions. This is all from a minutes. single picture of these people meant to look at him in any other way but with disdain, especially in how he treats. Um, but you can imagine I have a lot of questions. Yes. So um, I'd love to begin with you, 
firstly, just because I, I read that you started out in advertising. Yeah, yeah like here's a demo well, of them actually you know what I decided doing to it. Do? The, the, just I picture. decided to focus. I just... Now, again, no plans to bring that to the general public um, to allow people to use it. They're just well, showcasing, hey, we have this thing. What are your thoughts before I... I ramble more so, about this because this pisses so, me off. So this is, this, is, this, is a, this is a complicated thing because while I understand the, the hesitancy in terms of releasing it to the public, right? You can do a lot of deep fake, a lot of deep fake, especially like an open source model. Oh my goodness. There would be like the, the amount of deep fake porn <laughs> that, that would be out there would just be crazy, right? So... I, I get the hesitancy. When you bake it into a model like CapCut or into Adobe Premiere, that it's almost like it has like these additional guardrails. You're going to use it for this. You're going to use it for that, right? It lets it lets Adobe. So like the AI people, they work on making the AI. They license it to like a software company like Adobe or CapCut. They let CapCut and Adobe work on the the guardrails if things go wrong if people start using your software to make deep fakes it's not on the ai company it's on premiere for allowing them to be able to make porn soft porn fakes in premiere right so from a if i'm if i own the ai company and i have this this this, this ai that could be used for you know a lot of good but a lot of bad to me it makes sense to take Sora and partner with Premiere, right? Unless I want to get into the into the to a situation where I'm, you know, policing Sora, or unless I want to get into a situation where it's just like, hey, here's Sora, do what y'all want with it. We're not responsible for anything, right? That's not gonna at this point in time where we're at as a as a civilization in AI. You know, AI people are on their best behavior, right? You don't want to just throw out Sora to the wild and say, hey. Here, humanity, go wild. Here's Sora. Un, un, unfettered access. Make whatever you want to make with it, right? There will be so many, like, again, it, 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 the, the market will be flooded with porn, with, with deep fake porn. Um, or mind you, all the, like, election stuff, all the, all the things that, you know, all the politics and things that happen, right? So, like, yeah, there'll be so many deep fake videos. It'll be crazy. So I get it. Um, I just think it's a good way for them to be able to get it out there, at least initially, without assuming a lot of the risks for putting out this technology, right? Like, like for 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 OpenAI, it's a good way to get Sora out there, get it into the hands of creators or video people who want to use it for, you know, who who, who would already purchased Adobe Premiere to use it for what they use it for, right? And now they don't really have to like worry about it being used for the wrong things and then you can, you know, wait later to put out another version and let kind of let that technology uh, immerse itself within the population to where we're used to it. Then, you know, three, four years later, when you put out Sora, the unfettered version, it's a little bit less of a culture shock. That, that's, that's my thoughts. I get where they're going with it. I, I Do I wish I had an unfettered version of Sora? Yes. <laughs> but, can I sit here and look you in the eye and tell you that if I had an unfettered version of Sora, of, 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 of a generate anything I want, any video clip I want using AI and or, and or somebody's picture, I cannot look you in the eye and tell you that out of my first five prompts, one of them would not be some sort of poor, poor something. Like, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. There's going to be some famous person who I, who, who I, like, you know, it's just going to pop up, right? Like, right, 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 right. Beyonce. I wonder if right. remember when Sarah Palin was still out. Like, I wonder if Sarah Palin, <laughs> you know, I'm just sitting there with, the, with my juice. Let's say it's like it's like it's like Sora, but on my computer. I don't even have to reach out to the internet, right? Like it's just a uh, the home version, kind of like Llama. Man. All right. So so a couple of things. First, um, 
it wouldn't be that difficult for them to put guardrails on it, just like they do on ChatGPT, and just make the user agreement, you're responsible for what you generate. It's the same thing they do with the, all the other models that are out there. Um, <clears throat> so as far as that liability concern, I don't think that's a big, I, I mean, I'm sure there it's, a, it's an issue where they just don't want to deal with it, but it's easy enough to deal with because they already deal with that liability issue. Um, second, there's already models, uh, st stable diffusion. You can generate images and you could generate deep fake images of celebrities doing whatever the fuck you want them to do. Um, you can go and make porn versions of Sarah Palin if you wanted to using stable diffusion right now because it is open source and you can generate video using stable diffusion. It's not to the level of quality that Sora is. But the video that, that, that it generates also isn't terrible. <clears throat> so because uh, so, so there's already deep fakes out there. In fact, one of the other models that OpenAI isn't releasing is it, it uses a five second audio clip of someone's voice and can basically replicate it or a 15 second clip of someone's voice and they can replicate it. Um, so, and, you know, withholding that for security reasons or, you know, so people don't make deep fakes. But at the same time, there's a company. Um, I use it. it. It's called Eleven Labs, and I have a cloned version of my voice, and it. I just read a script to it, and I have a pretty, pretty damn good. I have to dig it up, uh, but I have a pretty damn good cloned version of my voice where I could type in whatever I want, and then my voice would say it. Using a company like Hey Janice and Synthesia, I can make a clone of myself already, <laughs> and have me say whatever I want me to say. Uh, using the, you know, deep fake boy or the replica of my voice. So these tools already exist and it can already be done, uh, which is why, um, even with voice cloning, the, they need 15 seconds. There's literally a fully open source version that you can just install on your computer. You could straight up just ask ChatGPT, how, how do I install this? Or just follow a YouTube guide on how to install it on your local computer. Uh, with five seconds of audio of your voice. Like you could just say, hey, my name is Christopher Lang. And it can clone your voice pretty identically. And that runs sure. locally, costs nothing. So you can already do it. So while I, I can understand using ethical concerns is a good ruse or a good something to hide behind for them, I think it's more greedy financial reasons than anything else because every tool that they're withholding already exists on the market. They're just trying to so, find a way to tweak it, make it a little bit better than what's available currently on the market, and then find a way to use it for to license it rather than putting it out to the public. Stable Diffusion is open source, correct? A hundred percent. So it's different, different business model. And with, with with that with that business model of open source, there is natural. And I'm not saying they should put it out for free. No, I'm no, not no, saying I get they it. should put it out for free, but my point is the no. the reasoning that they're using for withholding it, that scenario already exists. Well, no, but that's People can make any deep fake of anything. But that, that's what I want to talk about, though. So, like, for example, uh, Stable Diffusion is, is, this is like an image video generation type thing, AI. It's open source, but it's a lot harder to use. It's a lot less. Not really. I mean, for you, Chris, it's a lot less adapted in terms of like the general population, the general public. You could download an app. There's literally know, an app you could download but, onto but your iPhone. Many, but, 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 but for you, you're a developer. Let's 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 go back to the general public, right? The general public, a lot more people know about OpenAI, ChatGPT, Sora than they know about Stable Diffusion or how to use Stable Diffusion or how to like manage Stable Diffusion, right? It's always going to be that way. Like the open source thing is always going to be a little bit more, a little bit more work to get into than the polished and for production, for for consumer market ready, polished AI version that OpenAI is going to put out, right? So whether I'll it's- give you that, yeah. Right, right. Because that's just, just the to nature of To an extent, I'll give you that, yeah. Yeah, it's, just, it's the nature of how things work, right? And so- my point is for 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 OpenAI or ChatGPT to then put their stamp out, put Sora out, put their stamp out on it, be polished, you know, accept, charge a GPT Pro subscription, etc. Now the liability takes a lot more. Now it's a lot more because you're you're putting your. It's not just open source, right? If you, if you create an open source video generation and someone uses that video to generate some bad stuff, well, I didn't, I didn't sell it to them. I just made the technology. I put it out there. It is what it is. 
you're less liable. When you're creating this product and you're selling the product, and you're, you're, you're getting direct compensation for this product, now you're more responsible for the product that you're putting out there. You're more responsible for the long-term ramifications of that product. So I, again, I, I, I get where they're coming from. I can... But again, they're already kind of, in that way, they'd technically already be liable for any content generated using ChatGPT when they have no liability for that now, just based on the terms and conditions. That'd be like saying that we're liable for anything that anyone generates using uh, the Optimize AI tool suite. If someone wanted to go and make a porn image uh, and they were able to prompt around the guardrails um, in the image generation tool on Optimize AI, we're not liable for that. It says it in our terms and conditions that we're not liable. So the liability is always going to lie with the end user and their use of what they generate. Because you can also, if you want to make your own deep fakes and you want to keep them for your own personal whatever you want them for, no harm done. It's if you yeah, start we're... releasing them. But again, and then the releasing of that content, that's it's... where the liability, li and that liability lies with the user who released that content, not the company who gave you the tool to generate it. That'd be like if when back in the day, if someone were to Photoshop um, Beyonce's head on Sarah Palin's naked body, uh, it wasn't Photoshop's fault for giving you the ability right, to do that. Right, it was the person right, who right. did that and released it, who has the liability there. Well, li li you know, the liability lies with them. So, so I get it. But I, I just, I think it's a very, very, um, convenient way for them to hide behind it and and it's if that's what they want their business model to be if they want to build tools and for licensing exclusively then then do that or say that yes. don't mask it as something else and then magically let license your fucking i'm trying to stop cursing it just makes me aggravated uh but don't <clears throat> build it and don't have don't call yourself open ai don't have tools yeah. like chat gpt and this api and then but this one over here that's really cool, we're going to license this because we think we'll get more money. Or do that, but say that's what you're doing. Right. Don't hide well, behind all... a convenient excuse is my there's, point. There's also, this is, this is also an interesting time in terms of AI, government regulation, self-regulation, right? A lot of, a lot of like governments around the world are just starting to weigh in, are just on this build legal framework for AI, or... You know, there's a lot of concern in terms of AI and the dangers of AI. So mm -hmm. if I'm Sam Altman, uh, you know, the president and CEO of OpenAI, uh, pretty much the face of AI right now in terms of consumer right. uh, consumer consumption or uh, adoption. I am concerned about, because like, again, if, if you just because you can use Stable Diffusion to go create a, a some porn images or porn videos, right? Deep fake porn videos. That's not stamped with open AI. If open AI puts out uh Sora and people are able to get around those, those, those things and create these, you know, deep fake videos or whatnot, it's going to matter more because open AI put it out. Right? Like, and, and, and then and so like, I didn't I'm, technically put it out. They gave you the tool. Well, well yeah, they gave you the tools to they, do it. They, they gave you the tools and they didn't necessarily build the guardrails to protect, you know. So now from the from the from a regulation standpoint, because I'm this I'm, I'm open AI. I'm also thinking about like, you know, AI regulation. I'm thinking like, you know, Congress and Senate are going to put together rules in terms of using this stuff. There's going to you know, like 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 that. All that stuff is getting fleshed out right now. So. I would right. be very really careful in terms of the type of tools I put out right now while that stuff is getting fleshed out because it takes one big public release like oh, OpenAI just released Sora, no guardrails, and then you know I have the options wouldn't release it with no guardrails. I know, but I'm just saying oh, it takes one release where people get around the guardrails, and and then one news report CNN starts reporting about like all these deep fake porn things created by Sora. Now the the senators and the congressmen and the, the you know the, the government gets a lot more now the, the regulations become a lot more harsh. So you know again if I'm if I'm Sam Altman if I'm the CEO of OpenAI I am thinking a long game and 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 so to me I wouldn't do it. Let me just say it like this: if fiduciary responsibility to my shareholders, if I'm the leader of this company, I'm not putting Sora out there right now willy nilly like I did OpenAI like I did ChatGPT. 
I, especially while regulation is still being formed, government, all that good stuff, I can make a lot of money by licensing it to Adobe. People who actually use absolutely, this, people who actually use and need video generation, more likely built than not, in use cases are using Adobe, right? It 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 clears me from a lot of liability. Now, like if there's an issue, go see Adobe, right? So like. It, 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 it's, and it's, I get it. I get the fiduciary money, responsibility. It it's a way to. Make and I'm not money. saying don't do it. I'm just saying don't. I don't want to say lie about it, but don't hide behind a convenient excuse and then do this on the back end. Just say that's what you're doing because your argument is absolutely reasonable. Right. Uh, and the fiduciary responsibility to the shareholders and protecting them, not only you know making sure that they make their their money uh, from and make their return on their investment, but also protecting them legally is absolutely Sam Altman's problem, uh, as it is with the you know the CEO of Stability AI. But and that's cool. If, if that's the model you want to go down, but say it, say that's what you're doing. Don't hide behind ethical concerns. That's my big thing. To me, that's just boldly getting up here and lying to people. And again, I, I don't want to say, and that's why I don't want to use the term lying because they didn't flat out say we will release this publicly. So it, it's not a bold lie, but when every other thing that you've released, every the, the entire business model up until this point has been develop AI released to public for use. And now all of a sudden you get, you show this great AI, you show this great tool, but you can't have it, but it's yeah. for ethical reasons. Like just say you can't have it because we're switching business models and that's fine too. Change your damn name to closed AI. I'm going to have to agree with Elon on that one, but don't call yourself ethical. open AI, but just say it's what you're doing. I get the ethical reasons. Like that would be what would hold me back. If I'm if I'm the CEO of, of OpenAI, that would be what would hold me back from releasing Sora to the wild, right? If I release it under my banner and people start creating a lot of deep fakes, especially with all this regulation, especially with my company being the face of AI right now, like that would just look really irresponsible. People are already concerned about the dangers of what you can do with AI. So for me, I would probably hold that back. I would re I would feel much mm. more comfortable personally licensing it through Adobe and letting Adobe kind of deal with a lot of those headaches. And it's also more, now I'm giving it to Adobe, it's a more actual use case and that they can kind of guardrail a little bit better. That makes sense to me. As as the CEO of, 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 of or as Sam Altman, that makes sense to me. I If you were Sam Altman and you were in his shoes today, would you just release Sora right now, today? And then- yes. Okay, but, but now I a hundred percent because ethics is not my job. My no, job no, is no, to build. You, tools. It is. It is your job if you're Sam. It Martin. is not my job. That that's like saying because I also hate this argument. That's like saying that Meta and Zuck are responsible for what their users post on their platform. They're giving users an open platform to post as they choose, and I believe that by making Meta in charge of being responsible for what's posted on their platform is a bunch of bullshit. Because people well, need free speech, and that, that's why I actually highly agree with Elon Musk on his non-censorship on now X or Twitter, whatever you know, whatever you want to call it nowadays, because the ethical concerns are not my responsibility. The end user, the ethical responsibility should fall 100% on the end user using the tool. It's like owning a gun or a knife. I can buy a gun. I can go right now and go buy a gun, and it is my responsibility to ethically not go shoot people. It's not the person who sold me the gun. It's not the person who made the gun. It's not the person who made the law that let me have the gun's job or responsibility or even problem. It's mine because I went out and I bought the gun and I did the bad thing with the gun. Uh, yeah, anything, but, uh, the, the nail clipper could technically be a weapon. A knife, a kitchen knife could go be a weapon, and it's not the knife maker's responsibility to worry whether or not I'm going to stab someone with it rather than cut my chicken when I'm cooking dinner. Yeah, I mean, I would say this. So guy, that's, guy. Where, just... that's where it's 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 a very, very... Uh, I, I, I think they're they're worrying too much, uh, and I think they're trying to over-regulate shit that they don't have to regulate. They need well, to worry to about the people themselves. They're trying to self-regulate before, like, the government starts regulating them for them, right? And All right, and the government shouldn't get involved in it at all. There yeah, should be—it's like, the end user. 
<laughs> yeah, but we would, we, you know, should, should, like, let's be real. The government is going to get, there's going to be some level of regulation. Like, there's always been regulation. Oh, the EU um, already put out regulation on it. The government is going to govern it, right? So I guess what I'm, what I ask you to consider is, again, and I ask you this question again, if you're Sam Altman, we just put it out really nilly. But yes, this is still yes. But before you make that answer, or at least consider this before you make that answer, if you're Sam Altman, your fiduciary responsibility is to the shareholders of OpenAI. You want to mm-hmm. make money. You want it to be a long-term business that continues to grow. You want, yep. you know, you got to think about the future of that business, all that. If, like, ethics, can, can, game planning and understanding what's coming down the pipe in terms of regulation, you see the EU is putting out regulation, you understand the United States government is going to start doing that to an extent, you're going to want to be at the table when that gets put out meaning you're going to want to look like a responsible actor in terms of um, creating AI and being safe and whatnot. Like, I get what you're saying in terms of like freedom, freedom, just put it out there. It's not, everyone should be responsible, but you don't have that luxury as the CEO and the, one of the forerunners of AI, if you're Sam Altman, right? You may feel that way privately, but there's still a level of responsibility that you have to take Again, if nothing else, just due to the fiduciary responsibility that you have to your shareholders to at least look responsible. Because, like, it's your responsibility to maintain your image as one of the people that should be at that table when they're putting together the regulations, right? Your shareholders would appreciate that, right? If, if, if You know what I mean? Like if, if I invest in this company... You know it's a good way to get an invite to that table? Release it publicly and be like, hey... I know how to stop people like me from doing this again. Yeah, but again, like again, again, the thing is, if you're open AI, you don't have the luxury of being the bo- boogeyman. You can't do it that way. You can't like I, I know this is hard because, like I said, I know you, who you are as a person, Chris. You got a lot of Elon Musk. In you. I'm with Elon on this. I would but do exactly what Elon Musk Elon would do. Musk. I would say, here it is. But the problem with Elon Musk is Twitter's losing a lot of investors, a lot of money. So like that Elon Musk thing, like that approach doesn't necessarily always work and is not always in the best interest of the of, of the people you're representing. You know, Elon Musk, he's an amazing person, has a lot of different companies, and you know, I, you know, I wish him the best. But when it comes to um Elon Musk Well, and Elon Musk has no fiduciary responsibility to anybody right now because he privately holds the company. Yeah, exactly. He couldn't be like the CEO of OpenAI. Like you're a little too like like open AI is too too big and too um what's the word? What's the word? Too like 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 you just I don't know. There's a there's a fiduciary responsibility. If you're Sam Altman, if you're the CEO of OpenAI, the largest AI company in the world, there's a responsibility to at least look responsible. At least, you know, um consider public safety, deep fakes, you know, integrating things slowly. Um, not necessarily being the first person to put the first thing out right away and try to make money off of it right away, right? Like, you understand regulation is coming down the pipeline. So if you want to get ahead of that regulation, you got to, you know, play chess. You got to think, like, a couple steps ahead. So them licensing it to Adobe, to me, that's a chess move to get ahead of the regulation. Um, Them, it is also a chess move. Them holding it back is also a chess move to, like, get in the good graces of those who put together that re- who are putting together a regulation like look we can self-regulate we don't necessarily need y'all to tell us not to release dangerous stuff right away because we have the ability as you saw with sora and as you saw with these other things to self-regulate right so there's i i get there's pros and in, 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 as a ceo thinking to see thinking as a ceo and thinking a law game I, I get the pros of what they're trying to do i also get some right. of your, uh, and again, I, I well, and then that's, that's the thing. I'm so, like, I personally would have done it differently. I understand why they did what they did. Just don't hide behind ethics. Just say it's what you're doing. Be clear and upfront about exactly what it is you're doing. You're going to switch to a licensing pro- uh, model for certain things. Here's why you're going to switch to a licensing model. Um, fiduciary responsibility to make sure your shareholders are protected um, or your board necessarily. And OpenAI is not a public company, but. Uh, to make sure that your investors and your board members are uh, protected as well as compensated for their investment. 
absolutely exist, but say it's what you're doing. Just say it. Be front and clear. Tell me Just truth. say it. Yeah, exactly. Don't hide behind ethics. Because as we know, Sam Altman isn't necessarily the most ethical person. I'm willing to bet you any amount of money he agrees with Elon on the just put it out there. Um, there's been times where he said just put it out there, not necessarily pertaining to Sora. Um, but And I do believe he's acting as a good CEO and doing what he did. I'm not saying anything like that, but just be honest about it. It's the dishonesty in these big corporations because the other the other facet to that um, that's not necessarily being considered is by withholding these models. Well, I guess I'm sure it's being considered, but uh, we haven't discussed it quite yet. Uh, and I definitely think we're, uh, we're going to wrap up our episode with this as our main topic today um, since we're already a little over an hour in. But um, by also withholding these models to the general public, and giving companies like, uh, in this instance, Adobe, they they have plans to release it into their tool to monetize from it. But withholding these models and letting only, even uh, on preview versions of Sora, they gave them to bigger production companies, uh, people they picked and chose to be allowed to use that model. TED Talks got to build uh, like their intro using Sora. Um, but that makes an unfair advantage again where yeah. the rich people and the billionaires now have tools that the normal human being can't use to do the same job so it's unleveling you know, what ai is supposed to make a level playing field or was starting to make a level more level at any rate always having more money is going to make the playing field on level but it was starting to level the playing field a little bit and by withholding these models and this technology and only allowing these bigger companies who can you know, say invest $10 million into your business, use these tools. Yeah. No, I can see that. The playing fields being more and more pushed back to these big corporations rather than the normal everyday person. AI is supposed to level that. And this withholding is doing the opposite. So while ethically and morally from a protect his own ass standpoint, sure, he's doing great. But from an ethical and moral obligation to the general betterment of humanity and the ability, because just as someone that works for him, someone that works for Adobe might not have that next great idea or that next thing that could take Sora, for instance, and make it a, a movie generating machine. Right, uh, right, right, it right. stops the innovation by not having that accessible yeah, to the general public. Because look at Llama 3, it re was released a week ago, and there's like, 50 different new versions that have made it better immediately within a week by yeah. giving it by giving yeah. the general public access to these models so it allows for further innovation and betterment and advancement of ai technology which while yes the regulations are going to come down but those people are still going to be beholden to the same regulations with or without sam altman or uh google or whoever else with or microsoft withholding certain tools that they've already developed yeah. again it, it's a very good way to cover their own asses which totally get understand the need to do that i just don't agree with the decision i mean that that just takes it back to the argument between open source versus closed source right and there's pros and cons of both right closed is usually going to be a little bit more polished it's going to be a little bit more production ready um you know open is a little bit harder to figure out how to use it's open but the same token you got a lot more flexibility it's been that way with iphone versus google phones macbooks versus windows computers you know anything that's been open versus closed has kind of been that way and that's kind of been the argument for a long time you know um again i'm still cool with the closed model it doesn't even need to be open it doesn't need to be an open model but allowing the people to use the technology Right, Rather right, that right. like TED uh, for TED Talks shouldn't have shouldn't be able to make their great intro for their newest TED Talk when Bob Smith yeah. over at Bob yeah. Smith Video Production, right, exactly, has to go and get those shots themselves or hire someone to create them when, when there's a tool that exists that could help him get to that next level easily. So yeah. you're with, with nah. holding advancement of people's ability to create as well. Uh, you know, that we're not even with the open source argument there, just a closed source pay for it. The tool doesn't exist outside of a 
at all. You just can't use yeah, it right it's now. Like you're, you're picking and choosing who gets to try it first. And yeah, I don't like that. I, I, I agree. I, I, I get right. it. And I, I understand it. for beta testing. Yeah, I get right. beta testing. But now nah, is But to do long. these beta tests to make it seem like you're going to be releasing it and then to do a licensing deal <clears throat> and act all happy about it, like just say what it is. I just don't like their names. So now, now, now that we're actually going through all this, is like it would be cool if they, if their name wasn't OpenAI. Like, let's they're not open be... in any way, shape, or form. Nothing about yeah, their, like, their be... platform is open. <clears throat> As I get where Elon Musk was coming from, because he was part of that. He wanted to make it that was all open source, like kind of like he did with his Grok model. Yep, he's, fully he's, open. He's strong Apache Two license. Brock. You go ahead and use it. You be ethical. Uh, his entire license is don't be a dick, basically. Yeah. Like, be nice to other people. That's the entire license agreement for using Grok AI. That's dope. Like, so, like, I, I respect that. But also, you know, you know, the way they did do it, um, OpenAI I'm referring to, with their business model, with the, you know, getting an investment from Microsoft, it did help usher in and accelerate a lot of this AI adoption that we're going through. So, mm-hmm. You know, I, I, no one's perfect. Uh, I, I appreciate OpenAI for what they did in terms of just bringing everything, you know, accelerating everything and bringing everything to the forefront. Um, I do understand what you're saying in terms of going forward and like how they're kind of being shicey with Sora. And um, I also just, I, I get, I get, I get the shoes that Sam is in as well, right? Like the the CEO of OpenAI. You know, in the beginning, you weren't as heard of. Now you're like this big, massive company. You're like the forefront of AI. Everyone's watching you. So it's just different. The way you have to move is a little bit different now. There's, you know, there's just a lot of chess. There's a lot of pieces on the board that are moving. So whereas back in the day, you could just put something out and like, you know, blow people's minds. Now you got to be a little bit more strategic in terms of how you unleash certain AIs into the world and whatnot. So, um, I see, I see, I see the perspective from 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 all all involved, from the developer who wants to use it, from the end user like me who wants to try it out. It makes mm-hmm. some, <laughs> it makes some board fix. <laughs> yeah, and then again, I, I get all the different perspectives as well. I just I disagree with the decision that was made. That's all. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, it's, it's, uh, it's, 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 yeah. We'll see. What, we'll see what happens. Yeah, since since we are at a, at an hour ten at this one, I think that was a really good conversation. I know we were going to talk about the future of AI, thinking like five years down the road. Uh, I think that's something we should pick up maybe next week. Uh, be our yeah, main yeah, topic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what I do want to know is if anyone is listening this long, which I definitely think you should, I'd like you to weigh in on this discussion. What are your thoughts about open and closed AI? What are your thoughts about withholding certain AI models? I definitely want to hear what you think. Like, share, comment, because we are definitely going to continue this conversation in some future episodes. And we're definitely going to start talking about the future of AI in next week's episode as our main topic. And this is definitely going to come up again, because I think um, this open, closed, withholding versus releasing immediately type of of thing is going to be a real big deciding factor in how the future of AI is going to be, you know, five years down the road. So definitely like share comment, show us some love. Ivan parting words. Um, peace, love and hair grease. We'll see you on the other side. This is episode eight of AI for entrepreneurs. We'll see you on episode nine on the other side. Love y'all. Peace.